message from Becky on here says, is the live messing up? I hope it's not my phone. It's not your phone, Becky. It was the live. It decided to end. Yeah, there's two videos, so you have to go to the newest one. So refresh your page, go to it. If you've got your phones here, open them up. Open up Facebook. Go to the Gray Street page. Once you're on the Gray Street page, you'll see the video. Well, I'm challenging you that are sitting in here to do this. You didn't know that, did you? No. See, once we're on the Gray Street page, and oh, come on. Just scroll down. There's the live. Yeah, it shows me playing with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. I, I find that hard to believe. And you can just hit share and share. And now everybody that's on your Facebook page can see it. Oh, just something to do. While well, we're going through announcements, anyway. Well, now that we've got that out of the way, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We are so happy you're all here with us this morning. We had a wonderful breakfast this morning. For those of you that are watching online, sorry that you missed that, but uh, hopefully you can join us uh, in the future as we have worship. Uh, just a couple of announcements to get us started this morning. Uh, our next men's breakfast will be this coming Saturday, April 6th at 9 a.m., so join us for that. Um, men can have a redo of today's breakfast. Yes, Danny, I'm sure there will still be biscuits and gravy. Better redo. I'm going to take all the leftovers. Oh, you're taking home. So you will have to make more because okay. he's taking home all the leftovers. So no just so you know. <laughs> if you're watching online, be sure to give us a shout out in the comments. Say hi. There's also a link in there to the uh, announcement video so you can watch that as well. Then following uh, next Saturday, we will then jump to, I can't believe it's April. Mm. I'm not sure how that happened, but April 13th, we will have the April Season 9 Orange Track Racing Races. So we invite you to join us for that as well. Registration starts at 9.30 with racing at 10. And then Diane will be also posting up the uh, link to today's worship music. So it's not as short as normal. For whatever reason, that site was not playing nice. So you got the long link, but it'll still get you where you need to be. So with that... Now we can calm down. Everything's settled. God's got it under control. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the beautiful day you've given us. Father, the sun isn't out right now, but Father, we know that there's some rain coming in the future and that we desperately need because of the drought. We thank you for that. We just ask that it is a, a calm rain, not uh, where there's major storms, Father, because we want people to be able to stay safe. Father, we thank you for this week, this holy week that we've had that began on Palm Sunday with the celebration of your son entering into Jerusalem to Friday night, our good Friday tenebrae service. Where it wasn't, it's hard to see it as a good day, but in your plan, it was a great day because you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins. And this morning, Father, we get to celebrate his resurrection on, in this resurrection worship service, Father. And we thank you so much for that. Father, as we hear the words of this story, this real life story as it plays out, Father, we thank you. We ask that we be able to hear it. And that as we hear this message this morning, Father, that you lay it on our hearts. You lay it on our hearts to understand what it meant for you to send your son to be with us, to live a blameless life, and then to take on our sin, past, present, and future, then to die on the cross so that we could be righteous in your eyes. Thank you, Father. Father, we give all praise, honor, and glory to this morning because your son, he is risen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, Terry, you know, I, had to, I, I have to argue with you on Monday. He said the sun wasn't out. But see, we're here to celebrate because the sun is out. That's the whole thing. The grave was empty. So in our call to worship this morning, we're going to go to Mark 16, 1 through 8. And we're going to talk about uh, what that means to you. If you'd like to look that up in your Bibles, it's on page 759. 
So as people of faith, you and I are continually learning and growing in our faith. The miracle of Easter is that it's not a one-time event. Yes, the tomb was empty, and yes, Christ rose from the dead over 2,000 years ago, one Sunday morning. But instead of that being the end of the story, see, that was just the beginning of the story. Yes, it all happened a long time ago. Yet Easter comes every time you and I experience a new life in Christ. As we're renewed and re we're reborn, we have that Easter experience for us. Every time we are surprised by joy, we have that Easter experience. Every time we witness tragedy transformed into hope, we experience Easter all over again. See, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Grace and peace to each and every one of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this Easter day. <clears throat> so I invite you to hear these words from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. And this is on the resurrection. <coughs> when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they could go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they went to the tomb. And they were just asking one another, who's going to roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, even though it was extremely large. And when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they put him? But go tell his disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So the women left the tomb and ran away, trembling and bewildered. And in fear, they didn't say a word to anyone. So the most important part of that resurrection story in Mark are the words that the young man was speaking in there, that he spoke to Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. Go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he's going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. As Christ's followers, you and I travel together through the Lenten period, through this Lenten season that we started on Ash Wednesday. And we also journeyed with Jesus through his teaching, his healing, his proclamations that he made. We have suffered and died along with him on the Tenebrae service on Friday night. And now, made like him, we rise and go with him. We rise and go with him. Easter is one of those times when people are, are most open to hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. As we journey through the end of Holy Week in the scriptures here this morning, I want you to answer these questions. To whom will you go and invite to an Easter service? To whom will you go and share the good news? To whom will you go and witness your faith? And you need to ask these questions on a regular basis because these are the things that Jesus commanded us to do in the Great Commission. Go into all the world and make disciples of all peoples. All peoples. Not if you're worthy enough, not if you're just the right person, but of all peoples. We're to go and spread the word of God. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are in your faith journey. Just go. He didn't say, I'm only going to send qualified people out. He says, I want you to go. 
Well, from the cross, Jesus asked three things of us. Jesus, from the cross, asked us to have faith. Jesus Christ asked us to believe. Jesus Christ asked us to repent. So he's asking us for repentance. And when we respond to that, we receive renewal, release, redemption, restoration, rescue, reclamation, and a restored relationship with God. He only asks us to do three things. Have faith, believe, and repent, and come back into the presence of God. Let us pray. Lord, rise in us today. Lord, open our ears to hear and our eyes to see and open our hearts to receive your message today. That you would have it rise up in us, empower us, embolden us, and enable us to journey forth in your name and do your works in our lives. I ask a special blessing on Pastor Terry and I as we bring your word forth today made like him we rise hallelujah he is risen hallelujah indeed amen our first reading this morning will begin in matthew 26 starting at verse 17 if you're following along in one of the pew bibles that is page 740 if you want to follow along on your phone, you can find this actual version of the Bible, which is the Berean Standard Bible, on the YouVersion Bible app. Hear the word from Matthew. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He answered, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him that the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining with the twelve disciples. And while they were eating, he said to them, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were deeply grieved and began to ask him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, answered, You have said it yourself. Our second reading this morning comes from Matthew 26, 31 through 46, so as we continue on. Then Jesus said to him, The very night will fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And Peter said to him, Even if I fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus declared, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter replied, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples said the same thing. And at that time, Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he told them, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be very sorrowful and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is consumed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And then going a little further, he fell face down and prayed, My father, if it is possible, 
Let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then Jesus returned to the disciples, and he found them sleeping. Were you not able to keep watch with me for one hour? Then he asked Peter, Watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And a second time he went away and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot pass unless I drink it, may your will be done. And again Jesus returned and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples, and he said, Are you sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. See, my betrayer is approaching. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with him. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going directly to Jesus, he said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Friend, Jesus replied, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. At this, one of Jesus' companions drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Are you not aware that I can call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as you would an outlaw? Every day I sat teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But this has all happened so that the writings of the prophets would be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders had already gathered. But Peter followed him at a distance right up to the courtyard of the high priest. And he went in and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. Now the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were there seeking false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they didn't find any, though many false witnesses came forward. And finally, two came forward and declared, This man has said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. So the high priest stood and asked him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus replied to him, You have said it yourself. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And at this the high priest tore open his clothes and declared, He has blasphemed. Why do we need more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He deserves to die, they answered. Then they spit in his face and they struck him. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you? Meanwhile, 
Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him. You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all. I do not know what you are talking about. When Peter had gone out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And began, again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, those standing nearby came up to Peter. Surely you are one of them, they said, for your accent gives you away. At that he began to curse and swear to them, I don't know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conspired against Jesus to have him put to death. They bound him and they led him away and they handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, had, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was filled with remorse. And he returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood, he said. What is that to us, they replied. You bear the responsibility. So Judas threw the silver onto the temple and left. And then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the pieces of silver and said, It is unlawful for us to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. And after conferring together, they used the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. And that is why it has been called to this day the field of blood. Then what was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took 30 pieces of silver, the price upon him by the people of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord had commanded. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, do you not hear how many charges there are bring, they are bringing against you? But Jesus gave no answer, not even to a single charge, much to the governor's amazement. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release to the crowd a prisoner of their choosing. At that time, they were holding a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when the crowd had assembled, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. And while Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message. Have nothing to do with this innocent man, for I have suffered terribly in a dream today because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus put to death. Which one of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they replied. What then should I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him! Why? asked Pilate. What evil has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing, but that instead a riot was breaking out, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. You bear the responsibility all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and then handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and they gathered the whole company around him. 
They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt down before him to mock him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Then they spit on him. And they took the staff and struck him on the head repeatedly. And after they had mocked him, they removed the robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to be crucified. Along the way, they found a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross of Jesus. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which is the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his garments by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him. And above his head posted the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right hand and one on his left. And those who passed by heaped insults on him and shaking their heads and saying, Who are you to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. And in the same way, the chief priests, scribes, and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, but he can't save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And in the same way, even the robbers who were crucified with him berated him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, He is calling down Elijah. One of them quickly ran and brought a sponge, and he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and held it up for Jesus to drink. But the other said, Leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he yielded up his spirit. At that moment, the temple veil was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And after Jesus' resurrection, when they had come out of the tombs, they entered the Holy Spirit city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding him Guarding Jesus saw that earthquake and all that were happened. They were terrified and said, truly this was the Son of God. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen <coughs> cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut into the rock. Then he rolled a great stone across the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and Pharisees assembled before Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was alive, that, he, that this deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order that the tomb be secured until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead. And this last deception would be worse than the first. You have a guard, Pilate said. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. 
So they went and secured the tomb by sealing the stone and posting the guard. Jesus has risen. After the Sabbath at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled the stone away and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards trembled in fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they hurried away from the tomb in fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and grasped his feet and worshipped. Do not be afraid, said Jesus. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Let us pray. Please pray this prayer into your hearts. Holy Lord, who sent your only Son to save us, I pray to be reconciled to you. I pray to live in Christ and to let go of my worldly desires and instead to follow where Jesus leads. May I be made new in Christ, to be reconciled to you, O Father, and to be forgiven of my sins through your great mercy and your grace. Loving Father, thank you that your word is powerful and effective, living and active. You have promised that I do not need to be anxious about anything, but in every situation, I should present my request to you humbly in an earnest heart. I lift up my relationship before you today, Lord, and ask you to bring restoration and healing. Replace my fear with faith in you. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you that there is nowhere that I can go that is beyond your presence. Fill my relationship with the peace that comes from your presence. Your words that fill my faith will never be put to shame when my trust is in you. Give me faith in your power to restore my life. I humbly submit my life to you today. Help me to trust in you with all my heart. You are the sovereign King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light. To you be honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. We heard the Easter story this morning. I'm reminded of the sacrifices that are uh, mentioned in Numbers. And how it starts off with you sacrifice this many bowls and it slowly works its way down until it's one. This is a foreshadowing of Christ's final act on the cross. His death. As we prepare to eat of this meal, as we do each time we come together, this week it has, it just seems to fill me with so much more than just grabbing a wafer and drinking out of a little cup. And it should be that way every week. It is the representation of the final meal that Jesus has with his disciples, the breaking of the bread 
that he shares with all of them, including Judas, who as we heard, well, is it me? Yes. In no, in no, in other different words, but Jesus said, yeah, it's you, bud. Go do what you gotta do. But he called him friend. Did you catch that? Friend. What does Jesus tell us? in his teachings, that we are to love our enemies. Judas has become his enemy because he's going to betray him, yet he called him friend. Think about how that can impact your life as you move forward this week. On that final evening with his disciples, the Passover meal, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples. This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. And then a little bit later in the meal, he took the cup. Some, depending on which gospel you read, you may say something like, after the third hymn, he filled the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for the sins of many. Take and drink. Scripture reminds us that as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we are to do so until Christ's return. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and drink. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Holy Father, you have given us this institution that we call the communion or the Lord's Supper as a remembrance of your great sacrifice, of what Jesus did for us on the cross. But it's a representation of his entire life from beginning to end here on earth and what he did. Born of a virgin, lives a blameless life, teaches us how to live so that we can live. And then, the human side of him did not want to go through with it, Father, but you had a plan. And it just shows us that even in the worst of moments that your plan can be turned into a blessing. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you that your son ultimately did go to the cross. He did die for our sins. And then on the third day, he was raised to glory so that we could be righteous in your eyes, Father. Oh, Lord, we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. see everybody again. I'm glad to be back. Yeah. I had uh, neck surgery on the 20th, so praise God I'm able to stand here and, and pray with everyone this morning. Mm -hmm. So um, um, it's now time for prayer for the people, so if anyone has anybody they'd like me to lift up in prayer, let me know. So, okay. Children, children that are you know, seeing violence in the world, but they can use extra prayer today. Well, Father God, we come to exalt your name above all names. How majestic is your name in all the earth. For you have risen from the dead, and your Holy Spirit reigns in our hearts forever. For those that seek your name. For Jesus, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life to those who accept your free gift of this everlasting love. In Psalms 5, 11, and 12, let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous who surround them with your favor as with a shield. Father, we had many uh, we prayed for this week. 
and we have had a few miracles this week. And the fact that I had neck surgery on the 20th and I'm able to stand here this week, I give you all the praise, honor, and glory, and I thank you for all you have done for me, Jesus. We praise you for everything you do. In the hurting and in the healing, we praise your holy name, Jesus. As Charity Gale's song says, thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. For you brought us from the darkness into glorious light. We are transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Father God, we lift up Gwen's family and the Van Dam family who lost loved ones this week. We ask your peace that passes all understanding with, with, uh, to be with them and comfort them these days for the days ahead. May they cherish memories and thank you, Jesus, for the ones they have lost. Father God, I pray for the children of this world that are suffering horrendous, horrendous things, Lord Jesus. I pray that you put Christian people in their path, Lord Jesus, and that somehow they are able to find you through all the turmoil and all the trials that they are facing. Be with your children, Lord God, and raise them up as you would in Jesus' holy name. And Father God, we praise and honor you for the health of our families that are here and online today, and for all our grandchildren, and for all our homeless. We praise you for taking our sins upon you at the cross, and rising three days later so that we may live with you in eternity for all those that will accept your free gift of life everlasting. And if you don't know Jesus and would like to accept his free gift, I'd like you to repeat after me in your minds and your hearts, or out loud if you wish. Father God, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I accept the knowledge that you died on the cross and rose three days later to take away the sins of the world. I believe in Jesus. I want to ask you into my life today. Let the blood of Jesus cover me and the Holy Spirit be alive in me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit for all things. Amen. 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 Well, this wraps up our online portion of our service this morning. I invite you to look in the uh, notes that are posted up there so you can find the URL for our music that we have today. Uh, the music speaks to us just like the message speaks to us. So pay attention to what is being said in the message as well as the great music that God inspired him to go with. I want to close this morning with what I started with, with the call of worship. From the cross, because this day is so important to us. From the cross, Jesus asked us for faith. He asked us for belief. And he asked us for repentance. Those are simple things that any of us can do. He's not asking the world of us simply to believe and to say yes. But what we respond with, what we receive, is that renewal, the release from our sins, the release from addictions, the release from the things that would hold us and separate us from that relationship with God. We have redemption through that and restoration for our souls. See, that restoration, that release, that renewal, that rescue, that reclamation of ourselves lasts for eternity in a relationship with God. A relationship with God. A righteousness restored through Jesus on the cross. That's why today is so important. That's why the cross is more than just a piece of jewelry that you wear. It's an outward sign of an inward commitment to faith, to belief, to repentance, to return to God. Nothing can be more important for your life than those things. Nothing. Your life literally depends on it. Amen? Amen. 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 As we go through the week ahead here, I just pray God's blessing upon you. 
I pray the whole pray that the Holy Spirit would guide and direct your hearts and your minds to follow more closely to what God's will is for your life and for you to surrender your will to God. See, that brings the reclamation and the rescue into play. All God's people said. Amen. Amen.